Welcome back, folks. Shifting gears dramatically, we're about to uh, meet uh, Norman Morris, who is the author of a co-author of the book "Prostate Cancer Survivors Speak Their Minds." I'm going to read a little bit, real quick, from the forward, which comes from uh, United States Senator John Kerry. If you're opening this book, you or a loved one are probably among the millions of us who got diagnosed, uh, and you probably never expected it. Prostate cancer—it's jarring and it's scary. It is jarring and it is scary, Norman. Um, why did you write the book, and why is it so important? You know, I think that uh, like a lot of uh, survivors of prostate cancer, and you are, I, and I am. Uh, I feel I felt compelled to reach out to the other people who are going through the same sort of horror dealing with prostate cancer, and to help uh, support them and encourage them. And um, what we put together, my co-author, Dr. Burnett, and I, was uh, what amounts to, I think, a, a portable support group, if you want to put it like that. Because uh, people who uh, are in need of help uh, rely on listening to the experiences of other people. And I think that can be very helpful. Describe yeah. your story. Well, my story was... Uh, uh, complicated, but I can I can reduce it very <laughs> easily. Um, I had um, a number of infections that are, are known as prostat prostatitis, and um, I went to a urologist uh, who thought, well, it's just a simple little infection, and uh, I've had to deal with that. Have you? Yep, twice. Well, it, as you know, it responds to an antibiotic very quickly. That's right. Now, um, this kept recurring over a period, uh, would you believe, of 12 years. Mm -hmm. Now, every time that, uh, that he examined me, he had uh, diaposing symptoms. Um, one was, one test uh, indicated uh, that there was some uh, problem with the prostate. There's some contradictory evidence here, is what you're Exactly. Point is. And so, what he decided to do was do a wait and see procedure. Uh, he didn't want to ruin my uh, my lifestyle right. with urinary incontinence uh, or, or sexual dis dysfunction. So, what we did was he did wait and see, but he never did a biopsy. And uh, finally, after 12 years, uh, it dawned on him that maybe he should do something. And he found in the biopsy one core of eight that uh, uh, had some cancer in it. And it was Dr. Burnett who actually found it. Right. That was the second opinion. Right. And that emphasized to me and to everybody else how important the second opinion is because it turned out that the cancer was very aggressive, should have been taken care of, and... Uh, Consequently, uh, we went through uh, pure hell. You know, it's interesting because there are a couple of issues I want to get out there right away. The whole issue, and you were diagnosed in 2002, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. A lot of misconceptions, the screening, right? Right. Uh, the tests themselves, 40 or 50? 50? 40 years old or 50 years old? You're asking a complicated question. For the average person, I would say 50. But for uh, African Americans who suffer at the rate, at twice the rate of the rest of the population, and for uh, people at high risk, meaning if you've had uh, prostate cancer in the family, you've had a, a father with a brother, uncle, these people, high risk and African American descent, should do it in their 40s. That's important on a lot of levels, but it's only one of the many pieces of information, Norman, in this book that, that really stand out. Uh, what is, you said it's a, a support group, a mobile support group. Right. But if you were to say, because people's stories are in here, they're powerful stories, the message of the book, other than this early detection, other than getting screened, other than being proactive, other than getting the second opinion, what are the other key core messages, Norman? Well, I would say, first of all, we. The, the, the first important thing is to get an expert doctor, whether it's an oncologist or 
whether it's a surgeon, you want the best person you can find. You don't go necessarily to the nearest place. You do your research, you find out who has the most experience, who has the greatest skill. That's the number one message. Because it doesn't matter, for instance, uh, whether the technique, let's say surgery, right. uh, whether it's robotic, whether it's an open radical surgery, or whether it's uh, laparoscopic, that's not important. What is important is the expert who's doing the work. And the same thing with radiology. You can have a radiologist who uh, doesn't, is up to his snuff, and he can absolutely destroy your lifestyle. But you, if you go to somebody who's an expert, that's absolutely essential. That's number one. The other, the other thing is you gotta make sure you go to a, 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 a high class uh, care hospital, uh, probably, um, and there are many of them in the country. Right. Basically, uh, that, that's the essential message. One of the other things I wanna get at here in terms of detection, can men self-check? No. You can't? No, absolutely, it's too complex. Um, for instance, this uh, uh, simple blood test called the, um, the PSA test. The PSA, right. Uh, it's a very tricky test. Um, it's the best tool that we have uh, to determine whether a person has prostate cancer. But I'll tell you what the, the, the drawback is. The drawback is the only thing that a PSA test is going to tell you is there's something wrong or something uh, amiss with the prostate. Now, it has to be interpreted because a PSA test, regardless of whether the numbers are high or low, could be a benign condition right. called prostatitis, or it could be an enlarged prostate. And very often, uh, it can mask that there's a, a, a prostate cancer going on. You need to get that biopsy. You need to get that, you need to get an interpreted. That's Got what it. you need to do because sometimes the doctor will say, I don't think you even need a biopsy. And, and, but again, it's interpretation. Uh, Norm, it's interesting because, I, again, I wish I had more, more time. One in six men have problems with the prostate. Mm -hmm. um, some carry minimal cancer to their death because they don't deal with it effectively. But there are other people who have been identified here. Some of the biggest names of, of folks out there who have gone public, very important, including whom? Well, including uh, uh, Arnold Palmer. That's right. Uh, including... Uh, Senator Kerry, important. Senator Kerry, um, uh, Ken Griffey Sr. These are important. It's important for people who are prominent, for men who are prominent to... To come out and tell their stories, tell how they managed to survive, tell what their mistakes were. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and so that uh, people can, who read the book right. can identify with various people that are, whose stories I, are told. I, we'll talk off the air, Norman. I just got to do this. Prostate cancer survivors speak their minds. Uh, Dr. Burnett and Norman Morris, you've done an important public service. Thank you, Norman. It's a pleasure.